In late 19th century, a group of people in Austria and in Holland, Netherlands, and Germany, they said, we are painters, we are sculptors, we are architects, let's make work together. The motto of this secessionist group was exact verbatim of what Emerson, American philosopher, had said, that he said, the art we want, it is not art for the rich or for the poor, but we are going to create a, a common, great culture to embrace all these segments of the society. And I realized there is a possibility to make art for the public without compromising on the foundation of art. So I created a manifesto about public art. This manifesto talks about that rather having a private possession of art, we would have a public possession. With art, we're going to replace esoteric, which is self-reflecting, self-discovery, to exoteric. That was the main thing, to harness and control our ego. So we did not play the role of an artist who suffers endlessly and he never being understood clearly. We said, no, none of that. I argue that public art is the best continuation of modernism because Frank and Stella they reached the point where rather accepting public art, they started building buildings or becoming decorative. Modernism promised that, to make life easier for people, to conduct themselves better, to express themselves better. This is a bridge I made in 1970 going over a tree. And it was a, during Vietnam War. Somebody saw some of these branches are getting yellow. So they called Walker Art Center here. He said, if something happens to that tree, we will burn the building. So the curator went there and sprayed it green. This is 375 feet from Sculpture Garden to here. And then I asked John Ashbery, the most important contemporary American poet, to come to Minneapolis and walk over the bridge and write a poem. And there is enough pause in between the letters to correspond to your walking. So you can just read and walk. 